Welcome back to World of Warships Legends. I recently did a review for this game after a few hours playtime because I have experience through standard World of Warships on PC, through Steam and the Wargaming Launcher, and I thought I would give some tips out because there's a, like, I know a few people that haven't played much of the game. They're not exactly struggling to get into it, but hopefully with my experience I can give some tips that are going to help you guys out. There's eight topics I want to cover in this video, going all the way from selecting your ship all the way through to actually winning battles to progress through tiers and eventually get better at the game. So starting off with selecting your ship, if we go into the ship tree, you will see on Legends, the console version, you have three different nations. We have the Americans, the Japanese and the British. There's three different types of ships you can use, being destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. Each one of the ship types has their own role. The destroyers are supposed to get in close, drop torpedoes, deal heavy damage in short amounts of time, and they're basically there to be a nuisance. They're going to be annoying you because their maneuverability is so high. They have a lot of concealment. Then you have the cruisers. They're like your standard ships. They can come with torpedoes. They can be fairly fast. I would say they're more of an all-round sort of ship to use. Just because they have decent maneuverability, they're not too strong with their guns, they can have a lot of guns, some of them only have a couple of guns. And then you have your battleships, the big, sturdy, heavy ships. They're very slow, they're hard to maneuver, but they have some of the strongest weapons in the game. So once you've chosen the ship, we're going to go with the St. Louis, and that's because personally I think the St. Louis is very versatile, it's strong, it can deal damage, it's got lots of guns. In my opinion, it's one of the best ships for a starting player, for someone that's new to the game. And once you've chosen your ship, the first thing you need to do before you go into any battle is get to know the stats of the ship you're going to be using. This is going to give you an upper hand against anyone that doesn't know a thing about their ship. So on Xbox, if we press X and we go to the upgrades and loadout, we have some mods, like we can upgrade the things on our ship. On the St. Louis, we can upgrade the gunfire control system, which is going to give us a 10% firing range increase. We can also do a hull upgrade, which boosts our hit points, and I believe it adds more turrets. And then we can also improve our main battery to decrease the reload time and the 180 degree turn time. Then you can go into a loadout, you can check which ammunition you're using, high explosive, torpedoes, armor piercing shells. You have different consumables you can use. The fire extinguisher is going to extinguish fires. It can also, if your engine's failed, it can basically reboot it. It can stop floods, it can do everything. Then we have boosters, which are things like we can increase the XP we earn per battle. We can boost the commander XP, you get like credit boosts and stuff like that. And then you also get camos as well. You can reduce your detectability range. You can decrease the accuracy of enemies. And all these camos and the boosters you will earn over time by leveling up, getting crates like the containers, and doing certain campaigns and missions. One thing to note is they are limited. As you can see, I have 12 of these. And once you equip them to a ship, if you don't want to use them in the next battle, you have to take them off manually. If you don't remove them, they will carry over. So just be careful with the camos and the boosters you're using. But then the most important thing to get to know your ship before you go into any battle, which is so important, is going to be vital for winning games, is the stats page. So in this page, you have survivability. You can see your armor, the thickness of it. You can also see the hit points, I've got 29,500, that's why I recommend the St. Louis for any starting player, because the hit points are so high. The artillery shows all your armament, your main battery, it tells you the damage of your shells, the different types like the chance to set on fire is 5%, the max shell damage for HE is going to be 1100, from the secondary armament, your main battery is going to be 2100 and an 8% chance to set on fire. But then it also shows your max firing range being 11.1 kilometers with the upgrade and also your reload time and everything else. Then you have AA defense. It's not that important in this game at the moment because there's no carriers. Although there is a couple of higher tier battleships and I think a couple of the cruisers can actually deploy planes. Maneuverability is going to show your max speed. 22.2 knots. It's slow but it's heavy. It's got a lot of hit points. So you don't expect this to be like a Japanese cruiser going 30 plus knots. It shows your rudder shift time, your turning circle radius, 
Then you have your concealment, detectability range by C. If I'm further out than 9 kilometers and I do not fire a shell, enemy ships can't see me. Although if they boost using sonar and things like that, they will be able to see me. But normally, under certain circumstances, I won't be able to be visible to the enemy as long as I'm further than 9 kilometers out. And there's always a notification pop up on your screen letting you know that you've been detected by enemy ships. If it's a plane, 5.4 kilometers. And regardless of gunfire or anything like that, if you're any closer than 2 kilometers, you're guaranteed spotted. And also with this, just note that you have to be in line of sight. If you're behind a mountain or something, the ships will not be able to see you. Then as you'll see underneath my upgrades and everything on the left hand side, I have a commander. If we go into their menu, there's several different commanders you can get for each nation. If we go into the American one I have, you will see their rank. I currently have all of my commanders to rank 7. They have a base trait. You can inspire them with other commanders. And you get some nice perks you can add to any ship you have them under command of. Because I enjoy using HE shells, I like winding up my opponents by setting them on fire all the time. I'm using the Burn It Down XXL. It's a confrontation skill, which increases the chance of HE shells setting a ship on fire. Then we have Crisscross. You can select one perk from each of these rows. So Crisscross is going to increase the main battery traverse speed. Then we have Survivability skill, increase the max speed of the ship. And on the last one, we have Reaching Out XXL increases the maximum range of the main battery. And you'll notice that there's a mastery for each one having three tiers. So eventually, when I go to mastery three for this perk, I'm probably going to have a 3% extra main battery range. And the way to do that is go through the ranks with your commander. You'll see on the first two perks, they are at mastery two out of three. So when I unlock the final tier at rank 11, my chance of causing a fire is gonna go up an extra 1.5%. And when you inspire one commander with another, you basically get their skill. So the main skill for my Japanese commander reduces the consumables reload time. So that has been applied to the base trait I have for this commander. So I now have both. I can reduce the consumable reload time and I can also increase the torpedo's visibility range. So make sure when you have enough XP, you're leveling up your commander. If you're sticking to one nation, I'm currently using all three because I like going through all the different nations possible. It takes me longer to go through the tiers, but I have a bigger variety of ships to use. If one is still in battle and I want to return to port and go into another game, then I can stick with the same tier, same ship type, and just go straight back into battle. So yes, it takes me longer to grind, but at the same time, I have a better variety of ships to use, and I'm quicker in and out of battles. But if you're sticking to one nation, obviously try and max out the rank on your commanders either way, but it might be easier for you to do so if you're sticking to one nation. You have campaigns and missions that are going to help you out. They're going to give you credits and stuff like that. If we take a look at Ship Tiers 101, for example, these are actually very helpful in terms of credits. As you can see here, the path to Tier 7 must be completed in a standard battle. Tier 6 ships just cause 1,000 health points of damage to ships with the main battery. You get 84,000 XP and 7.2 million credits. That is going to be so helpful progressing through tiers and stuff like that because Tier 7 ships on this game cost 18 million credits. So make sure you're checking through your campaigns and missions often. Make sure to get as many as done as possible. There's daily ones as well and weekly. And if you want to skip any of the grinding, there's always microtransactions that you can go check out in the store. Sometimes, I think daily, they have a free container you can get. When you first log into the game, they'll give you a thank you bundle. And just quickly, before we go into battle and actually get some gameplay tips, if we go into our loadout quickly and hover over the ammunition... It explains what each ammunition type is best for. So HE shells explode on contact with a surface. They have a significant damage dealing potential with a high probability to cause fire or incapacitate modules. So if there's a destroyer annoying you, you can't necessarily kill them. Use HE shells and you could possibly incapacitate their torpedo tubes. That way they can't fire their torps unless they have the consumable ready to extinguish the problem and repair their torps. Then with the armor piercing shells, AP shells penetrate armor and explode inside the ship, causing significant damage to combat departments. The fuse arms if the armor is thick enough. If the armor is not thick enough, the shells will over penetrate, causing significantly less damage. 
So basically, armor piercing is going to be very good against battleships because the armor is going to be thick enough on the battleship to the point where this doesn't go all the way through. It's just going to penetrate the first set of armor and explode inside the ship. There will be certain situations where armor piercing isn't always the first choice, it's not always the best choice, just because high explosive is so irritating. I've had it happen in many games recently where I've taken a shot at even a cruiser, set them on fire, they instantly panic and think, oh, I'm losing like 200 health over like three seconds of ticking damage kind of thing. So they instantly put the fire out. Then you send off your second salvo that causes two fires, the consumables out for 45 seconds, they have to deal with 45 seconds of fire damage coming from two different parts of the ship. High explosive is a lot of fun to use but at the same time you're against opponents, you're not just playing this game by yourself, other players will use it against you as well. So just make sure when you're using your consumables you use them smartly, don't rush, don't panic. Ship's survivability should be enough to keep you going even if it's just for a couple of minutes in a battle, you're going to get some game time, so don't panic and use them, just rush and, oh, I've got to put the fire out, blah, 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 oh, I'm flooding. Like, flooding's obviously more powerful than a fire, but you don't need to panic, you don't need to rush, take your time. That's what this game's about, it's, there's like strategy to it, it's not just a run and gun, go straight in there, get yourself killed kind of situation. Okay, I wasn't able to find a tier 2 battle, I tried using the St. Louis, I queued for about 2 minutes, couldn't find anyone. 10 seconds with the Kuma and I found the game. So you're going to see tier 3 instead of tier 2. But this ship is good enough. And a couple of things to note about this game. Every single day you'll get 1.5 times the XP for your first victory. You have to win the game for it to count though. And what you want to do when you first load into the game is check your minimap in the top left corner. You want to figure out exactly where you're going. When I start in this position, I like going round to, on the minimap, the left hand side of that big mountain that's at A. Sit behind there, see what enemies come towards me, and basically just go from there. Do not go in, all guns blazing, I want to get kills, blah blah blah. This game doesn't work like that, chances are you're going to have three or four ships all firing at you. You're out of the game in less than two minutes, and it's just pointless, you're getting no XP, no credits. You can see this Kuma is pretty quick. The Japanese cruisers are the fastest, I believe. And you can see 24,200 hit points isn't too bad. And if I zoom all the way in and move my right analog stick all the way up, you can see that I can roughly hit about 12.6k. Okay, so I'm not looking forward to this because I have two battleships over here, being the New York and the Congo. And one thing to note about this game, don't get excited thinking you're going into a game where it's fairly matched. You will always come against opponents that are either one tier up or one tier down. So because I'm in a fight with a tier 3 cruiser, I'm going to come against players that are from tier 2 to tier 4. And if you look to the top right of my ship, you'll see the detected sign that says that they know exactly where I am. And you'll see that I have the high explosive set. I'm going to go for this Congo. I don't think he's going to target me because I have this Orion right in front of me. But you never know. He might target me just to try and get me out of the game quick. You need to lead your shots. You need to learn the distance you need to lead in front of your enemy. And yes, he's trying to take me out. This guy doesn't like me. Right, we've set him on fire. And see, he's put it straight out. So if I set him on fire again, he can't extinguish that for 45 seconds. Like, there we go. He's got a fire on him for quite a while. Probably around 30, maybe 35 seconds. I'm just about to crash. I should be able to manoeuvre that mountain. I got the kill, nice. On the console, you can hold your left bumper and go into an overview camera to see around you a little bit better. But make sure you return to your previous angle because it's manual on this. Once you come out of it, your turrets will start to rotate. And always look at the top of your screen and pay attention to the other ship types that are left. There's two enemy cruisers, two enemy battleships left. 
I'm going to try and go for the cruisers because I'm a cruiser myself. It's never a good idea to take on a battleship when you're in a cruiser. Also, if you're going to use torpedoes, what I like to do is switch. You have wide angle, narrow angle, and sometimes you have tube by tube. I always like going with a narrow angle. And wherever you have this little grayed out line, like right here, that's where to aim. And the ship you're locked onto, which is currently that Wyoming, right over there in the distance, if you fire, as long as they don't turn, slow down, speed up, or anything like that, your torpedo should hit. But just check your torpedo's range. I think these are 7 kilometers. I can't even remember properly. They have a long reload time, but they deal damage, they flood. They're good to use if you're close. But you have to be very close, so I don't recommend going over battleships with your torpedoes. Unless you're a destroyer, you've got smoke screens, you've got the speed boost and stuff like that. You can get in, get out. But then you have another thing to be careful with. The battleships have a secondary armament, so when you get close enough, that will automatically start firing, and sometimes that can be devastating. So when you're playing this game, just pick your targets, be patient. Don't rush in going straight for kills and getting hits and all stuff like that. You have to try and play this game smart. Learn the distances and stuff. You have two choices. You can fire a single shot or you can do a full salvo. So if I was to just tap my trigger, I can fire shot by shot. And then if I wait for those to reload, what I can do is double tap my trigger and it's going to fire a full salvo. And I believe a full salvo, I'm not 100%, but I believe a full salvo has a better dispersion so the shells aren't too spread out and there's two ships still hidden but i think they might be up here where the shadow is of the other ship so i don't want to go too far up there just in case oh we can see three of them so that might be the last one over there but it's going to be oh no it will be a cruiser and i can't get a hit because the mountain's in the way i've been spotted as well Oh, that's all four ships. So if I can take this Phoenix down. There we go, that's a nice kill. Maybe the Wyoming. I think that's a ricochet, the second ribbon you get. I believe that means three of them have either failed to penetrate or they've ricocheted. We've set him on fire. He's instantly put it out, so if we can set him on fire again. No, we've got two hits, but no fire. No, I managed to hit him twice again. I'm going to stick with HE. I should probably switch to armor piercing. But I know that this guy doesn't have a fire extinguisher at the minute. He's the last one. And I want to stay side on because I don't think he's focused on me at all. And that way I get the maximum amount of turrets to use. To deal some damage to him and hopefully take him out of the water. Yeah, he's going to go down. There we go, that's the final kill. So in that game, we got 3,500 XP, 350 global XP, which we can use across any ship. Then we got 3,500 commander XP, 85,500 credits. We got the bonus XP for the first victory of the day. We dealt 44,100 damage. We got 93 target hits. We defended nine times. That basically means we got nine hits whilst they were capturing a flag. We got three kills and we set enemies on fire seven times. Then we've got campaign and mission progress. Team result just shows you a scoreboard. People getting the medals. And you can see that your credits build up pretty quick. I've not put a lot of time into this. Like I've been playing it over the last day or so. But I've got 1.8 million credits. Obviously the higher up I get in the tiers the more things start to cost. But it's, it's a good starting point. You do have a lot of credits at the beginning. And you can see with the Kuma. I'm at 17,500 XP. I literally just need 6,500 and I can progress to tier 4. So that's going to do it for this video. I do apologise for the length of it. But I thought I'd go into some of the advanced tips. 
in depth to help you guys out that might just be starting out with the game and just be careful when you're playing the game mode where you literally have one base each and it's like capture the one point because you will get some sneaky destroyers that speed up go straight to your base and everyone's disappeared they've like separated down both sides of the map the enemy's got a free shot of taking your base sometimes it can end the game like within a few minutes and also when you're playing domination like when there's four capture points just be wary of each point that's being captured because not only do you get points for actually capturing the objective you get points for wiping out ships so again apologies for the length of the video if there's anything you believe i've missed that's really important to helping win games and stuff like that leave it in the comments and if i find your comment helpful enough i will pin it so that everyone else can see it easier but that's going to do it for now i hope it helped you out thank you for watching